announcements. Would you join me in prayer this morning? And Father, we do just join with the angels in just singing glory to you, praise to you, and honor to you because you're due. You're, you're worthy of all of our worship and all of our praise. And so, Father, everything that we say here today, everything that we do here today in here, upstairs in the children's ministry, Lord, may it just be to your praise and to your glory. And Father, would you just bless our time together? Help us to be responsive to your spirit as you speak to us through the, the songs that we sing, through the opportunity to give, uh, through the opening and preaching of your word. Father, we just pray that you, as you speak to us today, as you meet with us here today, that we'd respond to you. And Father, we want to continue to lift up those families that are separated because of deployment. And Father, we pray you would continue just to, to allow those, enable those deployed members to stay strong, to pursue after you during that time. And for the families here to help them to know that you're close and to know that you're with them. And those that are struggling with illnesses and sicknesses today, Lord, we just lift them up to you. Father, would you just bless everything that we do and say and think and feel today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Merry post-Christmas or happy pre-New Year. I'm not really sure what the, what the proper greeting is for this Sunday that falls in between, so I suppose we will just go with the old standby. Good morning. Welcome to Aviano Baptist Church. We're glad you're here this morning. And a very special welcome. If this is your first time with us this morning, a special welcome to you. Um, I do hope you got a welcome envelope when you came in. First time guests, it looks uh, just like this. Um, and inside there is information about our church and what we're hoping that you'll find here. This is a part of our DNA. We're working very hard to make this a part of our DNA. That whether you have been walking with the Lord for a long time faithfully or you have, this is your first time in church or you're anywhere in between that, um, that this is a place where you can come and get connected, grow in your relationship with Christ and so that we can be sent and used of him here. And so flip through that welcome envelope and if, if you, so you'll find information about different ministries and stuff. If you have questions, there should be some contact information on the bottom of all of those little flyers there. The other thing I'll ask you to do is there's this little flappy in the bulletin that says, tell us about yourself. So would you take a moment and do that for us and just tell us about yourself? Help us get to know you a little bit. And then on the back of that, and this is for everybody, um, it says prayer requests. And so if there's a way we can be praying for you, a way we can specifically minister to you and your family, would you fill that out on the back there? Um, just put your name and phone number, some kind of contact information on there somewhere so we know who we're praying for. We have a team of prayer warriors that we share these prayer requests with. The deacons and I pray over them, so let us know how we can be pray for you, praying for you, how we can minister to you and to your family. So jo uh, join me in the center section, uh, the back center section of the bulletin where it says announcements. Um, and let me draw your attention to some things that are going on. Um, as we move into the new year, we're going to be talking about this a little bit later, just opportunities for us to be involved in what God is doing here in the Aviano community. Um, certainly, we have, an, we have an amazing children's ministry here, and it's not child care. If you've ever put your kids in children's ministry, ever been a part of it, it's way more than just child care here. Um, we take the opportunity to minister your kids very seriously, and we want to teach them the Word of God. We want them this to be a place where they, they begin to know the Word of God and those seeds are planted. But as you can imagine, this community, a lot of young families, and God has blessed us with the opportunity to minister to a lot of those kids every week, but that also requires a lot of hands. Um, and so it, we are, there are openings to serve in all ages of children's ministry, and so if you feel it, led at all to serve in the children's ministry, there are openings in all ages. We're going to have a training and orientation on the 26th of January after the second service. So that's for new folks that have not been involved in children's ministry before. You would get an idea what it looks like, so we'll talk about what it's all about, how it's organized, all that stuff, what our policies, procedures are, and even for folks that have been involved, so we can go back over those things again. Uh, 1215, right after the second service on the 26th of January. Um, Emily Johnson's our point of contact, and her email address is there in the bulletin. So shoot her a note. Let her know you're interested in coming to that. So she's, she's going to order lunch, she'll order pizza, I think, for that. So she want, we want to make sure we have enough food. So um, let her know that you're involved, you're interested in coming to that. Men, the, the men's retreat, the IBC men's retreat is coming up very quickly. 17 to 20 January in Lenk, Switzerland is where it's going to be. It's where it is every year. Um, the 3rd of January is the last day for us to sign up for a carpool, because if we're going to arrange a carpool, we have to know how many people are going, and we need some advance notice to do that. Um, you can still sign up and go on your own after that date. We just won't have a carpool that's happening. Um, there are flyers out on the Connection Point in the Welcome Center, so, so if you're interested in more information about that, grab one. And then if, if you are going, register. The, you, know, you can go to the website, find instructions on how to register there, and then shoot Renee a note and let him know you're going. Um, so that we can coordinate the carpool for that. No later than the 3rd of January, that's our cutoff for the carpool. 
101 Discipleship, our next season of discipleship is starting in January. This has been an incredible blessing for us to walk together with a more seasoned believer. And so if you want to talk about things like how to have a more effective prayer life, how to really dig into the Word of God, if you want to talk about those kinds of things um, and learn and, and, and become more equipped and better equipped to do that in your own personal walk, come talk to me after the service. We'll get you, we'll get you connected with someone, a discipler, so that you can begin in the 101 Discipleship. The material is out on the connection point as well. If you want to take a look at it, we're using the Navigators 2.7 material, so feel free to flip through those books and take a look at it. Um, also, the audiovisual team, Renee is faithful back there, not only our men's guy, he's a deacon, he's our audiovisual guy, um, but the AV team needs, needs you as well. Um, so if you feel like that would be for you, kind of a behind the scenes sort of thing, sit back there and run the AV stuff. We're going to have two training sessions coming up, one on the 7th, one on the 9th, so you can get a sense and take a look and see what that's all about. Um, and then the baptism service. We're going to have a baptism service next Sunday. That won't be the last one we're having this in 2020, but it will be the first one we're having in 2020. So if you are interested in being baptized, come talk. I want to talk to you before we do that. I want to make sure you understand what baptism is, what it is not. Um, so if you are interested in being baptized next Sunday, um, contact me this week so we can get some time together and we can talk about that. Um, and then one last thing, it's not in the bulletin, but I want to mention it anyway. I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I'm starting a version Bible plan for us to kind of begin to read through together. We're starting with the, the four-day plan, how to start reading your Bible. That's going to start tomorrow. So if you have not joined that yet and you want to, um, the link is on the Facebook page. I also shared it on the WhatsApp group. Or just come talk to me, and I'll tell you how to get connected to that so that we can begin to read that together. And then immediately after that, we're going to jump into the Gospels and start reading through the Gospels together. So um, if you're interested in joining us in version, let me know that. I know that was a lot of announcements, right? That was a lot of things to cover. We got a lot of stuff going on. That was a lot of things to cover. We're glad you're here this morning. So as we continue in our worship, let's just stand and take a moment to greet one another. She wants to come up. Dyer wants to come pray too. Okay, please return your seats. We continue our worship. I hope you guys are still in the Christmas spirit because we are singing Christmas songs today. <laughs>
may be seated. Thank you, praise team. We certainly never get tired of Christmas songs. Right? I, well, I, let me speak for me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we, I never get tired of Christmas songs. And, you know, you think about the words, and there's always discussion about the words of, of songs and what we sing in church, and, and the words of those songs are just so deep. We think so much about who Christ is and what he's done for us, and, and, they're, just, and they're just things that make us really focus on who God is, and just an amazing thing. Thank you, praise team, week after week, being so faithful to service. Well, today is the last Sunday of 2019, and if you hadn't thought of it this way, it's the last Sunday of this decade. I don't know if you had thought about that, but if you can believe that, this is the last Sunday of the 2010s. This decade will be put to rest um, in just a couple of days. And as we think about all that God has done in this past year, in 2019, all He's done even in this past decade, and we look forward to what He's going to do in 2020... Um, I invite you to turn with me, join me in the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. There's a place there in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, where God talked about the future he had for his people. Now, if you're joining us in U version, you, you'll find the event there, you'll find the passage already, already laid out for you, Jeremiah chapter 29. 
If you need a Bible and you don't have one with you this morning, look under one of the chairs in front of you. You'll find one there. And if you're not familiar with where Jeremiah is, you can take your Bible and open it to about the halfway point. That's going to put you Psalms or Proverbs somewhere in that neck of the woods. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, and then Jeremiah. So join me there, Jeremiah chapter 29. That's where we are this morning. Let me find Jeremiah 29 where we are this morning. Very familiar verse there in in verse 11. Uh, Maybe one of the most quoted verses in the Bible, you certainly see it plastered all over Facebook, Jeremiah 2011, but I don't want to just, I don't, I don't want to pluck it out of its context. I want us to see, I want us to see it in context, what God had, the whole story of God's vision that he gave there to the children of Israel in Jeremiah chapter 29. About a year ago, our, our leadership team spent several weekends uh, we, we were thinking and praying and seeking the Lord to, to discover where He's leading us as a church family, who He wants us to become and, and what He wants us to be. And, we, and we, we got a sense of His vision for us. It's printed on the back of the bulletin every week. And we put it there. Can you hand me the bulletin? I meant to bring the prop with me and then left it right there. It's printed on the back of the bulletin every week. So we can be reminded on a regular basis of who it is that God wants us to be as a family to connect you to a loving church family, to grow you to know and love Jesus more, and to send you to serve Jesus, to impact Aviano in the world with his message of hope. And those are more than just words on the page. I was active duty for 25 years in the Air Force, and there was and every, every, I don't know, five or 10 years maybe, the Air Force got the bug to do this mission and vision and, and re, you know, re, refresh our statements and all of that stuff. So we'd convene a team, and we'd come together, and we'd do that, and we'd come up with a great new mission statement for the unit, a great new vision statement, put it up on the frame, it, put it up on the wall, that'd be the last time we ever heard of it. It was a lot of great work, a lot of great statements, but it impacted absolutely nothing. These are not just words on a page, not just a great phrase that we came up with. Every one of them was chosen on purpose. Every every phrase represents something that we feel like God wants us to be and something we feel like God wants us to do. For example, it says, connect you to a loving church family. And so that requires that we think about our presence, our presence online, our presence in the community, from the time you walk into the front door to everything that we do, is that helping you recognize and realize that you're among family while you're here? And are we reflecting the love of Christ as a family? Everything that we do. And then we asked ourselves those intentional questions for every one of those points. And what I want us to do in the next several minutes is take a look here in Jeremiah chapter 29 and talk about God's vision. What that means. What, what, what is it all about? What does it do to us? What does it do for us, how God works through it in our lives, and then I specifically want to intersperse throughout the message some of the things, what does God's vision mean for us as we move into 2020? As you've got your Bibles open there to Jeremiah 29, I'm not going to read through the entire text. Verses 1 through 14 is where we are this morning. It's a very long text, so I'm not going to read through the whole thing at one time, uh, but I just want to kind of look at it, pick it apart. We'll, We'll look at the verses as we go through it, but here's our big idea. That God's vision for his people is amazing, right? As God gives us a vision, the one thing that we, we talked about and we discovered as a leadership team was that when we start to get a sense of God's vision, it ought to be something that far exceeds us. It ought to be something that exceeds our capability, it exceeds our, or even our imagination. It ought to be something that's just completely gigantic. And we almost look at it and say, that's kind of crazy. It ought to be that way. God's vision for his people is amazing. And it will stretch us far beyond anything that we can even imagine. And I think we'll see that as we we look through it. I want us to kind of look look here at these verses in Jeremiah chapter 29 and see what God's vision means, what it does for us, how he works through it in our lives. First thing we see is this, though, that God's vision reflects God's purpose. So these verses we're looking at, verses 1 through 14, in fact, verses 1 through 23 of Jeremiah 29 are all part of a letter. Verses 1 through 23 are a letter that Jeremiah wrote to the children of Israel while they were in exile in Babylon. And you can read about this, or if you want to go back and read how they ended up there, why they ended up there, you can read about that, 2 Kings 24 and 25. But the children of Israel are in Babylon, and Jeremiah, God prompts Jeremiah to write this letter. And he starts with a reminder by God, uh, that it was him who sent them there. Look there at verse 4. 
Thus, uh, verses 1 through 3 are really kind of the introduction, sort of setting it up. This is Jeremiah is writing this letter. Verse 4 is re really where the letter starts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He starts with a reminder that, listen, it is, it is I who have sent you there. That I'm not completely devoid from this. This didn't happen apart from my, my input. That I knew this happened. In fact, I was the one who sent you there. Now, they were being punished. They were being disciplined for their disobedience. That's why God sent them into exile in the first place. The continued idolatry of the, the nation of Israel. And God sent them into exile to cure them of that. And by the way, it did. But they were sent there for punishment. They were sent there for discipline. And while our situation's not like that, or at least I hope you don't view it that way. I hope you don't look at your time in Aviano as exile. You don't, you don't look at it and say, well, well, this is not at all what I asked for. God is punishing me by sending me here to Italy. I hope you don't look at your time in Aviano that way. But we do have to recognize God's hand in placing you where you are. They had to recognize God's hand. They couldn't say God has ignored us. God's turned his back on us. God doesn't know we're here. He's forgotten about us. Honestly, sometimes those were the things that probably went through their minds. But, but they couldn't say that. God reminds them right up front that I had my hand in this. We have to recognize God's hand in placing us where we are. And he sent you here, just like he sent them there. He brought you here to Aviano. Now, it was the military probably that cut your orders and sent you here and the personnel system and all that stuff. It was personnel was active duty, so anything wrong with it, I'll take the blame for it. I don't know. We, we were designing it while I was still active duty. And so, you know, it's the system, the Air Force system that sent you here, but God's hand was in that. And we have to recognize his hand. He brought you here for a reason. His vision for you being here in Aviano reflects his purpose for you here in Aviano. Proverbs 16, 9 says this, man makes his plans, but the Lord orders his steps. We have things, your, your plan may or may not have included Aviano. It might not have been on your list. It might not have been a thought of yours. It might not have been anything that ever entered your, your imagination. But we make our plans, but it is the Lord who is ordering our steps. And God is a God of order. And he's a God of organization. He's a God of plans. Everything that God has touched reflects that. The, the universe reflects that. We talk about the plan of God for our lives all the time. God is a God of organization and a God of order and a God of, of planning. And, and so the work that we do, everything that we do in his name ought to reflect that. And in our work, what we're involved in individually in our lives, what we're involved in as a church, that's our offering to God. And we owe it to Him for it to be the very best we can do. For it to be our first fruits, not our leftovers, we owe it to Him for it to be the very best that we can do. But we approach all of it with this in mind, with this very thought. It is His hand that has placed us here in this community. His hand that started this group of believers we call Aviano Baptist Church. His hand that has guided and led this church since 1974 when it first started. It's been His hand all along. And so we keep all of the plans in an open hand. We say, Lord, this is your church. This is your mission. That vision statement we put on the back of the bulletin, we feel like this is your vision for this church. Everything that we have planned, we hold in the open hand. Your Holy Spirit, as you lead us, you have, you have the last veto vote on all of this. You can change this whenever you want. And we have to let him have his way, corporately and individually. And sometimes that begins here with a, with a mindset to bloom where you're planted. And sometimes we can get into a situation and our mind is somewhere else. Well, when I go to this place or I get back to that other place or when I reach this certain place in my walk with the Lord, then I'll start to bloom. But we have to have a mindset that, that says, I'm going to let the Lord have his way right here, right now, right in this place, starting today. And that's essentially what Jeremiah tells them, verses 5 and 6. He says, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and become the fathers of sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. Very different time, by the way, ladies. <laughs> give, your, give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. In other words, he's saying, go on with your life. Bloom where you are. Live out your life as the people of God right where you are, right there, right today. Now, to be fair, God had to tell them this because the false prophets were telling them you're only going to be there for a short period of time. And Jeremiah tells them over in verse 10, they're going to be there 70 years. Now, I realize that's a lot of D-Rose extensions, 70 years. 
And none, none of us are going to be here that long, just to be in this place for 70 years. But for the period of time, where you are, wherever you happen to be today in your walk, wherever you happen to be, the fact that you're here in that work center, in that community where you live, we have to say, God, we're gonna, I'm going to let you have your way right here and right now in my life. I'm going to bloom exactly where I'm planted. Let your service for God go on like it should. That was kind of his message to them. Don't stop living. Don't, don't think, well, we're strangers in this strange land. We're not going to be here forever, so therefore we're not going to do anything. We're not going to live our lives as witnesses for God. We're not going to live our lives as the people of God. We're just going to unplug and disconnect. And let your service for God go on like it should. Get engaged in living out his purpose. That's what he's saying to them. You may be a small remnant there of God's people, but listen, you hold the future of God's plan of salvation in your hand, he's saying. Don't, don't let it die out with you. Continue your life. Continue seeing God's greater purpose for what he's going to do through you as the people of God. And he's saying the same thing to us. To get engaged in living out his purpose exactly where we are. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6, he said the people had a mind to work. That's how they were able to carry out this incredible feat of rebuilding that wall around the city in only 52 days. Because the people had a mind to work. This is my place on the wall. This is my part of this plan. This is what God's got me doing right here, right now. And let me get engaged in that. Let me get involved in that. And as you, can, you consider what your 2020 is going to look like for you individually and for, for your family. As you think about what 2020 is going to look like for you. And as we do that as a church family, let me ask you this. This is a rhetorical question, so you know everybody doesn't have to answer it once. What do you feel like God has brought you here to do? What do you feel like God's purpose is for you here in Aviano? Don't think it stopped the moment you got on a plane and you left the States and you came here. What is his purpose for you here? What do you feel like that is? What do you feel like he's brought you here to do? How can you bloom where you're planted? How can you begin to grow in your relationship with Christ right where you are and be used of him to impact Aviano and then on the world for his kingdom? What can you do? What, how can you bloom where you're planted? Because his vision to bring you here reflects his purpose for you here. And that's like one of the first things we have to notice about this, is that when God casts a vision, he is very much in this. The vision that he gives, the vision that he ultimately gives to the, to the children of Israel reflects his purpose. He took them there for a very specific reason, and he wanted them to continue living out their lives as the people of God. The second thing is this, that God's vision invites our intentional participation. Did you notice the, the wording that he uses, the, the phrasing that, that Jeremiah uses that God gave him? He says, take wives and become fathers. Take wives for your sons. Give your daughters to husbands. Seek, in verse 7, seek the welfare of the city. Now, those are all verbs. Those are all action words, right? Take, seek, pray, give. Those are all action words that require intentionality. He did not say to them, well, when you get there, guys, I hope you meet a nice girl. I hope you stumble on someone who, who can become your wife. He didn't say that. He said, I hope your sons find, find a nice lady and they can settle down and, and, and take a wife. He didn't say that. I hope your daughters find a nice man. If, if, just think happy thoughts about your city and, and hope it all turns out well. He didn't say that. He used some, some very intentional words that required action on their part, required intentionality on their part. And that word in verse 7, he says, seek the welfare of your city. That, that's a Hebrew word that means diligently investigate, diligently inquire after how you can do this. He said, you really got to go after it. You can't sit back and hope that it comes to you. It's the same idea that Jesus gave in the Great Commission. Go and make disciples. He didn't say, hope the disciples come to you. He said, go and make them. Seek and go after, intentionally, diligently investigate. In other words, actively look for ways to impact this city. The one that I sent you to. Look for ways to carry this out. And we're intentionally upping our game in outreach this year. We realize that God has placed us very strategically in, in this city to reach this base, 10,000 Americans by my last estimation at this base. 
And God has strategically placed us here in this area. And, and you will come here for a few years and you will move on to the next place. And us as ascending church, we are, in, we are upping our game in outreach this coming year. We're, we're planning and, and hoping and praying to start three strategically placed home groups. Now, those are strategic both in location and or spirituality. We, I've talked to you for a couple weeks now. I've been talking about us praying about starting a home group in the Sicile area. That's a very physically strategic area. Many of our people live in that area, but also strategic spiritually. Maybe one that's focused on Christianity 101, just the very basics of the Christian faith. Maybe one that's focused on marriage or, or child-raising topics to, to talk about the issues that are relevant to young families. But that's one of the things that God is leading us into this year. The Deployed Spouse Dinner is on base. We're going to continue to do those that we have an opportunity to reach out and just love on deployed families in a way that they're very open to and they're, and they're very much in need of. Intentionally reaching out to the dorms. The English-speaking non-Americans, too. That's a significant focus area for outreach in this coming years. We think about the intentionality. The words that God gave Jeremiah to tell them. Very intentional actions that were required on their part. And what that looks like for us in 2020. And everybody had a part to play. And everybody had to play their part. He said, to the, to the generations he's speaking, every generation had to get married, and every generation had to do, do their part, start a family. Everyone collectively had to seek the welfare of the city. Everybody had a part to play, and everybody had to play their part, or this plan wasn't going to work. And not just to do it, but to see how it fit in God's greater picture. To see how it fit in fulfilling the purpose that God had taken them to that city to do. He said, seek the welfare for, of this city. For in its welfare, you will have welfare. There's a larger plan at work here as God is working through them. And everybody had a part to play. And everybody had to do their part. Peter said, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, he said, be faithful stewards of God's grace, the gifting that God has given us, the abilities that God has given us, and we are to be faithful stewards of that grace and to pass it along. See, Israel really had three options, as I see it, when, in concerning their context and how they interacted with the context around them. They could huddle among themselves and ignore the needs of these Gentiles, these unbelievers. They could say, listen, we are the people of God. We want nothing to do with those people. They don't think like us. They don't act like us. Their traditions are not at all like ours. And so they could have huddled together among themselves and completely ignored the needs of the unbelievers around them. They could have blended in and become like the unbelievers around them. Listen, we'll just go along to get along. Right, that'll be the easiest thing for us to do, the less, least trouble for us. We'll just blend in and be like the unbelievers around us. Or they could intentionally be salt and light in their context. And that's, and that's what God had called them to do. Listen, seek the welfare of this city. Pray for this city. Be salt and light in your context. And that's what he, he's called us to do. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Paul said, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, making the most of every opportunity. Let your speech, he said, be gracious, seasoned as it though with salt. He's called us to be salt and light. Jesus called us specifically, use that terminology for us to be salt and light. Those are change agents, the two of those. They change the, the nature of the context around you. The 80-20 rule is alive and well in most churches. And you've heard the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. And that's alive and well in most churches. I think we're a little bit above that, a little bit higher than 20% involved, engaged here at our church. But still, it's pretty close, 80-20. And often I hear when I do the membership class, I do that once a month, usually the first Sunday of every month. And, and this is a phrase I hear a lot in that class. Well, we're only here a short time, so we're not going to get too involved. I'm only going to be here two years. I'm only going to be here three years. So we're, we're not getting too involved. It's not going to be that long. But listen, our service for the Lord is a key part of our discipleship. Just as much a, a part of our discipleship as the one-on-one -on -one discipleship that we're talking about. Just as much a, a part of our discipleship as our giving. Just as much a part of our discipleship as our quiet time and our prayer life, our service for God. 
as he has gifted us and given us abilities, and we grow in those, that's a, a very big part of our discipleship walk. Don't let your time, let me encourage you, don't let your time here be a three-year vacation from God. We say, I've come here and I'm just going to take a break and do nothing for the kingdom of God. Well, don't let it be that. Be intentional about getting involved. One of our goals for this year is to up that 20% to 50%. So we have 50% of our congregation actively involved in regularly regular ministry service, regularly involved in using their spiritual gifts. And the other critical thing they had to do, not just to be intentional, not just to get engaged, let God have their way, he calls them to pray. He says, pray for this city, verse 7. Pray to the Lord on its behalf. Now, this was not a friendly merger, them being there in this city. They were not there on PCS orders, where at least they had some skin in the game, so at least I joined this organization. This, this was not a friendly merger, them being in the city. Essentially, they were prisoners of war. They were POWs. That's what they were doing there. This, this was not something they, they had hoped for. And God says, pray for this city. Your captors pray for them. That's what he's telling them to do. Those people that had taken them as POWs. Now, how much more do you suppose? He, he needs us. He wants us to get engaged, to pray for a city where we're not POWs, where we're not captors, where we have a, a much more friendly relationship. And if he, he tells them, pray for that city, how much more would that apply to us? To make praying for this Aviano area, the lost in this area, those who don't have a church home, those who are not connected, to pray that God would use us in a way to bring his life-changing message of hope to those people that have not yet darkened the door of our church, or maybe haven't in a long time. Dr. David Packer is a friend of ours, his, he and his wife, Lana. Um, David wrote a book several years ago called Whatever Happened to Prayer. David's been a mentor of mine. We served with him for many years up in Stuttgart, and David's been a mentor of mine for several years. And he wrote this book, Whatever Happened to Prayer, and this is what he says in the book. He said, we are in a spiritual war, and the most effective weapon God has given us is prayer. If we really want to make a, a dent in this city, really want to make an impact, not for this church, not so we can pat ourselves on the back and say, look at what a great church we have built here, not for that. So, so that one day when we stand before the Lord, He'll look at us and say, well done, good and faithful servant. If we really want to make an impact for the people in this community, for the kingdom of God, it begins with us on our knees individually and corporately praying for this city, praying that God would do a mighty work here. God's vision invites us to intentionally participate. And as we, we look down the road in 2020, we're, we're looking to start a youth ministry. Yeah, a youth ministry. It's been feast or famine in our church for a long time with teenagers. Either we have a lot or we don't have any. And we have several families that have, that have come recently have teenagers. We're going to start a youth ministry sometime throughout the course of 2020. We're hoping to get that started at the end of January so that we can have a, an effective place to reach teenagers. The praise team is always looking to recruit. We're blessed by them Sunday after Sunday, but they're looking enough to recruit to have two full teams. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we, if we could alternate like that and give the, the regulars up there a week off? They're looking to recruit to have two full teams. One of the children's ministry goals was this past year continues into the coming year is to have enough volunteers that we can have every class open every Sunday. If you've got children, some Sundays you come and you see some of the classes are closed. We just, those Sundays we simply don't have enough volunteers. And our, and our goal, our desire, what we're praying for is that God would bring enough workers for the harvest that we could have every, every one of those classes open every Sunday. Parents' night out, needs-based ministry to deployed spouses, a lot of things that God is leading us in for us to intentionally get engaged. And you pray about what's your part? Where might you fit into that? And His vision will require an all-hands-on-deck approach, especially in the early months of 2020. Some of you know this already, um, Jeannie is requiring surgery on the discs in her neck. Um, it's a condition that has, she's had for several years, it's not getting any better, and the doctor said it's going to have to be operated on. And so we're, we're talking to the doctors in the States right now, the surgeon must have the surgery done in the States because they speak the same language we do. Um, and so we're talking with the docs, and she's probably going to have the surgery in March, um, and, and I'm going to go with her for not only the period of the surgery, but the period of the uh, majority of the period of the recovery. So we're going to be out of pocket from early March until about the middle of May. And the deacons and I are working right now on the details of who will fill, fill in during that time. And, and we cover your prayers 
for her as she goes into the surgery, even, even now as she thinks about it, but as she goes into the surgery and the recovery time and all of that, we absolutely cover, covet your prayers. But, but it's going to require for us too an all hands on deck approach. What we don't want is that, is that our, our progress for the kingdom of God just hits a, a lull during that time. So you think about the intentionality. God's vision invites our intentional participation. And where are you going to be intentionally engaged in that? So that we can continue. In this, in this vision he's given us to reach Aviano in the world with his life-changing message of hope. And then the last thing I want us to see is this, is God's vision drives us to his hopeful future. Not his future where he says, boy, I hope something good happens there at Aviano Baptist Church, but his future that is full of hope for his people. That's where his vision drives us. Verse 10, for thus says the Lord, when 70 years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you to bring you back to this place. This place, of course, being Jerusalem. Now, we're not, we're not really told the, the mindset of all of the Israelites, but I can imagine this, that God's future for them must have seemed unattainable. I mean, they had been taken captive by the world's superpower, Babylon, a small little nation of Israel taken captive by the superpower of Babylon. And, and they had not only been defeated, they had not only been captured, they're, they're absolutely demoralized by the entire thing. And so I can imagine when they hear these words that, that Jeremiah wrote in this letter, and they said, well, thus says the Lord, God said, I'm going to bring you back out of this. I don't imagine that's the mindset they were in, that one day we're going to be out of this situation. I, I imagine they, they must have, it must have seemed to them that it was absolutely unattainable. And I mentioned earlier, as we, as we went into our vision-catching process, that's exactly the, the thought that g- came into our minds, that if God has given us a vision, whatever that looks like, if it's something we can easily see the outcome for, well, then maybe it's not, maybe it's not from God. Maybe this is what we want to do rather than what He's leading us to do. There ought to be an element of this that is absolutely unattainable. Paul said this in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and I, and I love the way this is worded in the New King James. He said, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. Exceedingly abundantly. Listen, the future that God has for us, it ought to seem a little bit unattainable. Just a little bit out of our reach, even, even for our personal walk. As you sit down and think about what you believe God wants to do in your own life, how he wants to grow you this year, it ought to be a little bit out of your reach. It ought to stretch you to the point to say, I'm not even sure that's realistic. That's a little bit unattainable for me. And that's what God reminds him of verse 11, that that most quoted verse maybe. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. That process we went through about a year ago was a process called refresh. That's what we call it. And we were calling it, at the beginning, we were calling it a vision casting process. But you know, as we really got into it and we started to pray about it, we started to seek the word of God and seek God's face, we stopped calling it vision casting. This is not our vision we're casting for the church. This is God's vision we're catching for the church. We started calling it. This is a vision-catching process because it's, it's His vision. It's His future. And, and notice what He said to them in, in verse 11. He said it's, it's His vision, His future, and His plan for them is good. Now, we had some good ideas, I think. We, we come up with some things that, that were pretty good thoughts, pretty good ideas. And at the end of the day, the things that we would come up with, they're pretty good. They're not bad. But God's vision, God's future, God's plan is a good one. It will lead us exactly into the good future He has for us. And His plans will lead us to become something we're not today. It will always stretch us. Stretch us beyond where we are and and who we are. I mentioned that God brought them here to discipline them. And there were lessons that he wanted them to learn. And yeah, by the way, they did learn them, their 70 years in captivity. They they did learn many of those lessons. And and one of the lessons was, was for them to get in line with him. Look what he says in verse 12. 
Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. To get in line with him. To follow him. Verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. There's that word seek again. To intentionally look for, intentionally come after. He's, they're going to follow him. It's one of the things he wanted them to learn. And to be obedient to him. Verse 14. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes. And I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I've driven you, declares the Lord. I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. You will pick up following after me where you should have been all along. That was, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to stretch them and cause them to become something they were not today. That's what God wants to do in each of our lives individually. What he wants to, wants to do in us corporately as a church. To become things we're not today. And his hopeful future for us. One of the things that we, that we have prayed about and said, Lord, we really feel like you're leading us in this direction is for us to have the opportunity to impact with, with an average of 180 people a week. Now, that's huge for a church like ours. We're running about 130 a week right now. That's a 45 or 50% increase almost. That's, that's almost unheard of. But to say this is, this is a God-sized thing, it should be a little bit off of our fingertips. 15% of those non-Americans, non-English or English-speaking non-Americans. 10,000 Americans in this community, at least that many, maybe twice as many English-speaking non-Americans. How 15% of those each week for us to be reaching non-Americans. And then maybe even laying the foundation for a branch campus of Aviano Baptist Church. With that many English speakers in this community, it would be unrealistic. It would, be, it would almost be crazy, even in our new facility, and I'll give an update on that here in a couple of weeks, but even in our new facility, it would be crazy to think that we're going to reach a you know, significant portion of them just at this church. And so we're looking at laying the foundation to, to plant a branch campus of Aviano Baptist Church somewhere here in the local community as we move into the next year. It drives us into his future that is a future, a good future for us and a future that is full of hope. Well, here's how I want to end this morning. And I realize we're ending a little bit early this morning. But I don't know of anyone who's ever complained about getting out of church a little bit early. I think that'll be okay. But here's how I want to end our time this morning. We're going to sing a song here in just a few minutes. And let me put those up there. And if you want to know more about this amazing God, and if you sat there this morning, you heard about this amazing God that does amazing things in our lives and leads us places to become what we are not today. And if you want to know more about this amazing God, and how he can change your life, I'd love to talk with you after the service. I will stay right down here in front of the, the congregation after the service, and I'd love to have that conversation with you. But for the rest of you, I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit different. That slip I talked about in the bulletin it says prayer requests on, on the back of it. It's a visitor slip on the front. Here's what I want you to do. As you look at this list of things, some of the things I've talked about, some of the things I have not, if you know what God has brought you here to do, you say, listen, I know, I, I don't have all the details, but I know God's called me here to be part of the men's ministry. I know God's called me here to, be, to reach out to be part of the children's ministry, the outreach team. You know what God has called you to do. I want you to tear off that visitor slip and just write your name and your phone number on it, and just that much, men's ministry, women's ministry, children's ministry, whatever it is. If you have all the details, write them all. If you just have a few of them, just write that. Or maybe you know God has brought you here to do something in your life, but you're not quite sure what it is. And you're ready to take that step to let him have his way in you while you're here. Write your name, your phone number, and just a giant question mark. And that will cause us to get in touch with you and say, okay, let's start a, start a dialogue about what your gifting is and what God has brought you here to do. There is a purple box over there by the door, not the trash can. Now, don't put them in the trash can. The purple box there by the door, Linda's got it. And so after the service, what I want you to do is I'm going to put this back up after the last song. And after the service, what I want you to do, write that on that slip, tear it off, drop it in that purple box on your way out this morning. I'm going to ask the praise team to come on back up. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, thank you for being a vision-casting, future-oriented God. A God who's not content to leave us where we are in our personal walk, not content to leave us where we are in our, in our walk as a church. And Father, we thank you for the hope-filled future that you've given us as believers and as a body of Christ 
And the opportunity that you've, you've given us to reach this community, the, the Americans that you bring through there, here, the, the English-speaking non-Americans, thank you for putting us here. And Father, as we think about where you're leading us as a church, where you're leading us individually, Lord, I pray you'd begin to stir in the hearts of your people what you've brought them here to do. Help them to make that commitment. It might even be a little bit scary, but help them to make that commitment. and Just say, this is what God has brought me here to do. Father, if there's one here this morning that says, listen, I, don't, I want to know more about this amazing God who, who seems like he could change my life. Father, I pray you continue to stir in their hearts to help them to respond to you. Lord, would you continue to speak to us in these next few moments as we sing? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, stand with us as we sing our, our final worship song. put that last slide back up again. And as we dismiss our time this morning, if you, did, if you want to talk to someone about your relationship with Christ, maybe you, you've never met this incredible God, you want to know more about how you can know him, how you can have your sins forgiven, I'll be available to talk with you after the service. And the other thing I ask you to do, though, is to look at this list and just pray about, Lord, what, what is my place here? What did you bring me to do here? And fill that out on that slip, drop it in that little purple box on the way out the door. If you want someone to pray with you about that, I'm not really sure. I just, I don't really know what it is that God wants to do with me. I'll be available uh, to pray with you about that or anything else that might be on your heart this morning. Let's dismiss our time in prayer today. Father, thank you once again for graciously including us in your plan, for bringing us here so that we might have encounters specifically with people out there on the base and around the community, that we can be salt and light for you in this area. Father, thank you just imagine how many lives, Lord, you, you, you can touch the, just that one encounter that we might have. And so thank you for allowing us to have a part in that. And Lord, as we go out from here, as we think about what great things you want to do in our lives in 2020 is, as people and as a, as a church, Father, we pray you continue to burden us, continue to, to build that fire within us, to, to intentionally participate in the work that you've brought us here to do. Father, we pray for your blessing now as we go. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>